And now I'd like to present our final speaker of this session, Irina Pippo, who is a postdoctoral researcher here at the Department of Finnish, Finno-Ugrian and Scandinavian Studies here in Helsinki. The title of her presentation is Your Language or Mine, Politics of Participation in Immigrant Integration Training Classrooms. Please welcome Irina. Good afternoon. Um, in educational contexts, especially those that involve students with uh, immigrant uh, background, participation is nowadays a central organizing value. From classroom pedagogics to active forms of citizenship, participation is seen as a key to uh, involvement and integration. Moreover, often the two are discursively intertwined so that certain kinds of uh, participatory pedagogical practices are seen to better enhance students' participation in the society and labor market. In the heart of these discourses is language and uh, language choices in the classroom. Currently, especially translingual pedagogies are making their way into the classrooms bringing the students' first languages more tightly as a part of uh, a ratified semiotic means for language socialization. The ideal of translanguaging not only acknowledges multilingualism as a, a normal societal state of affairs, but also embraces the idea that borders between languages are ideological and need not necessarily be upheld in interactional situations. The approach challenges previous monolingual ideals and pedagogies that have stressed the importance of uh, teaching the target language in the target language. My paper um, explores the politics of participation in immigrant integration training classrooms in Helsinki metropolitan area, okay, <laughs> um, against this background of changing uh, pedagogical ideals. The paper is based on my 11-month uh, ethnographic fieldwork in adult literacy training classrooms in 2017. My back own background is in Arabic studies, and this fieldwork was uh, a part of my ongoing research on adult language socialization in Arabic-speaking diaspora here in Helsinki metropolitan area. In this research project, I examined the dynamics of language socialization and the immigrant integration classrooms have, have been a site to study the institutional aspects of this process. I will proceed in my presentation the following way. Uh, first, I will uh, talk a bit um, about basic literacy training for adults and uh, thereby contextualize my presentation. Then I will take a few examples of how language choices were regimented uh, in these classrooms and I will contrast these discourses with the array of uh, language practices uh, actually present during the lessons. I will then discuss the coexisting ideals with regards to participation. And I will conclude with a couple of remarks regarding translanguaging as a language ideology and a pedagogical resource in multilingual classrooms. Okay, next page. Uh, basic literacy training for adults with immigrant background is a 10-month uh, study module that is offered in cases where the students' literacy skills in Latin alphabet need specific support. In Helsinki metropolitan area, the training consists of three smaller modules, and this type of structure enables the students to either move forward to other types of training, uh, earlier or if needed, um, then repeat the modules uh, without completing the entire 10-month course uh, at one go. During my 11 months in the classrooms, I followed through 
uh, two of these 10 month uh, study uh, modules. The students uh, come from a variety of social backgrounds. The educational backgrounds ranged from those with university degree to those with uh, no or very little education. Age-wise, the students ranged from barely 20-year-olds to those in the late 50s. Uh, nowadays, most of the students that attend the training are secondarily illiterate, which means that they do know how to read in their first uh, language, uh, but need support in Latin alf alphabet. In each of these study tracks, however, there were also those that started their education from the very basics, how to hold a pen in their hand. Linguistically, the majority of the students in these courses came from Arabic-speaking countries, and this situation reflected the demographics of recent immigration to Finland. Although the Arabic speakers formed the majority, most of the groups were linguistically really heterogeneous, so that in a group of 15 people there might be something like five different uh, mother tongues. And these mother tongues were mostly Asian and African languages uh, that are not typically part of the everyday repertoires of the teachers. For most students, uh, the literacy training was the first contact to institutional language uh, education in Finland. Uh, and many of the students had arrived in the country approximately two years earlier and had relatively recently acquired an asylum or a, a residence permit. A few words about the nature of these courses is also in order. Uh, although the focus is on building and strengthening the literacy skills, the scope of the training is much broader and includes study skills and skills needed uh, in finding one's place in the Finnish society and working life. The basic literacy training is also a regulated part of uh, state government measures for social in integration. Until the end of uh, year 2017, uh, this type of training was governed by the Ministry of Economic uh, Affairs and Employment and administered by the local employment offices. The local employment offices uh, bought these services from mostly privately owned uh, educational organizations and also acted as the official that directed students to this type of training. And until the end of last year, the basic literacy training formed the first optional step of uh, immigrant inter integration training. Now the situation is uh, more varied. I won't go into the details. The institutional structures have a direct bearing in the ways in which the work in the schools is organized. However, in the field of education, curricula are usually the regulatory measures that have bearing to the questions of language choices in the classrooms. And also in the basic literacy training, uh, it has its own uh, national core curriculum that instructs how the educational organization should organize the training. Um, there are also guidelines considering the educational philosophy that should guide the pedagogical practices. I will come back to this uh, later in more detail. Let us move on to regimenting and regulating uh, language choices in the uh, classrooms. Let me first describe the situation that got me into analyzing these dynamics in more detail. I entered the classrooms uh, as someone interested in multi- or translingual practices uh, that are part of second language. Uh, socialization. And I indeed did find such practices in the uh, classrooms. Both the teachers and students engaged in translanguaging on regular basis in the groups that I uh, 
participated in, um, building bridges between uh, one's first language and Finnish was, uh, in a way, it was already integrated in the study materials that were to large part produced within the organization. The teachers used, uh, uh, utilized the collaborative translation and various digital translation services in their teaching. They uh, transcended from Finnish to both English and students' first languages and utilized in a very versatile way the Arabic-speaking teaching assistant was that uh, was uh, uh, present at the school. The translingual practices also seem to have uh, somewhat strong organizational support. The management had organized groups that consisted, consisted only of uh, Arabic-speaking students in order to facilitate Arabic medium instruction. And the organizational support provided for my own project was also a, a clear sign that, uh, of openness towards developing new kinds of pedagogies. However, <laughs> All these uh, practices were relatively invisible in the organizational discourses and often when students' first languages as a pedagogical resource uh, became a topic of discussion, the teachers brought up the perceived uh, strict Finnish through Finnish policy uh, in the organization. Um, However, there was no explicit organizational policy um, in the form of any kind of regulative uh, documentation. So I figured that, okay, this is uh, rather a set of normative expectancies, ideals, and meta discourses that were somehow related to, the, to language choices in the classrooms. And uh, I began to look in more detail what happened in these classrooms. Let us uh, unpack these questions by exam examining a textual artifact that appeared on the walls of the classrooms halfway through my fieldwork. This is the original version, and here you have the English translations. In the bright blue print, I hope you can read them. Um, the poster is a set of uh, house rules produced by the Working Group for General Comfort, a school uh, internal working group that consist, consisted of uh, staff members. Um, the poster both expresses a preference for using Finnish in the classroom and ex explicitly mentions some behaviors that are unwelcome. Um, this includes students translating teacher speech to other students and uh, turning to their friends instead of uh, their teacher in asking for help. You can also see uh, reference to the broader socializing role of these courses. In this document, um, it's interesting, you can see how regulatory documents such as curricula are part of the speed chains in these schools. The three points here that state the aims of these courses are formulated just as in the core curriculum as receptive, productive, uh, language skills and study skills, but there is also more, more to this. Let us first look at the discourses and practices surrounding the use of Finnish in these classrooms. In these classrooms, uh, Finnish wa uh, was mostly uh, taught through Finnish. Uh, however, it's very important to have a closer look uh, at what kind of linguistic models uh, and practical concerns gave rise to these pedagogical choices. 
Um, in this organization, there were definitely uh, more multiple normative models for language use, um, but uh, most strongly, uh, these uh, models had to do more with the classroom register that the teachers called Selko Suomi, easy to understand Finnish, uh, rather than standard language per se. The course concern for students' possibility to participate was in the heart of this uh, particular register. Registers of com communication are reflexive uh, models uh, whose signs are performed and constructed in comparable ways by a group of people. The teaching language in these classrooms can definitely be called this type of a register. Easy to understand Finnish is an institutionally theorized register for communication with people for whom the standard, uh, standard Finnish is uh, considered too difficult to understand. The register was originally developed for communication through written channel, but nowadays it is equally a register for multimodal uh, oral communication. In Finland, an organization called Selkokeskus provides education and advice on easy to understand language and has published several handbooks on the uh, register. There are, for instance, nowadays guidelines uh, for using easy to understand Finnish in a uh, spoken interaction. So, uh, the register differs in many respects from standard Finnish. Uh, speech is structurally more sim uh, simple, and by the way, the poster also was written in Selko Suomi. I didn't mention that. The tempo of the speech is slower, and the sounds are often uh, pronounced extra carefully. Uh, there are a lot of uh, repetitions and a lot of gestures, some of which are conventionalized. For example, yesterday I went to buy some milk, tomorrow we will come to school at 8 o'clock, these kinds of things. Okay. Mm. Easy to understand Finnish was also seen as a democratizing pedagogical tool that enabled everyone to participate in multilingual uh, groups where students didn't have other shared linguistic resources that could be utilized uh, in the learning process. Finnish through Finnish was considered a medium that treated all the students equally. Finnish through Finnish also maximized the use of target language during the lessons, hence enabling the students to better participate outside of the classrooms. Many of the students didn't have strong Finnish-speaking networks, and for those students, the course was a really important uh, opportunity to use Finnish. This worry was not just something teachers expressed uh, when they talked about the challenges of uh, being socialized into Finnish society, the sense of iso isolation and difficulties to come in contact with uh, Finns was, came strongly also uh, through in my interviews with the students. This is to say that although there were educational ideals, uh, connected with the practices in the classroom. They were not of monoglossic kind uh, in the sense of promulgating just the use of standard, standard language, nor were they isolated of the practical concerns uh, of everyday life at the school uh, or outside the school. Let's go back to the uh, Poster. The same concern for possibilities to participate also applies uh, uh, to regulating the use of students' first languages in the classrooms. Uh, the poster describes some linguistic behaviors that are not welcome in the classrooms, namely acting constant constantly as an interpreter for one's classmate and uh, addressing questions to one's uh, classmates in one's mother tongue instead of asking the teacher and speaking out of turn without raising one's hand. Although all these points do relate to language, they also relate to norms of classroom behavior. Each student should have the chance to participate in the classroom activities as themselves, um, 
and the teacher should be the one coordinating the activities and turn taking in the classrooms. The language choice of this uh, poster is not accidental. As I mentioned, the large majority of the students spoke Arabic as their first language, and Arabic was also a very important lingua franca in the classrooms. And this uh, led often to situations where both the teachers and the non-Arabic speaking students were left out of what was going on in the classrooms. So, by regulating the right to use Arabic, the teachers were concerned about the group dynamics and inclusion of everyone, including themselves. And at this point it needs to be noted that at the same time these collaborative practices that were regulated in the poster were also deployed in the classrooms with teachers' initiative. Uh, so translation and uh, different kinds of uh, collaboration and helping each other was part of the classroom uh, practices. So, um, why, is, uh, why are these practices so invisible in the classrooms? I argue that this boils down to metadiscourses. Let me see. Yep. Selkosuomi could even be uh, called a normative register in the classroom context. One sign of the normativity was that often the outside visitors to these classrooms were translated into Selkosuomi. I, for instance, uh, experienced this when I were first entered the classrooms. Um, and here I do not want to deny the pragmatic value of easy to understand Finnish. I myself was socialized into the register and ended up uh, interviewing my non-Arabic speaking students in Selkosuomi at the end of my project. Um, but I just want to point out that activities like this simultaneously perform and construct the norms of the classroom language and translations are a denotationally inexplicit way of metapragmatically modeling the classroom register and its semiotic range. And these instances of overtly corrective conduct provide uh, clear evidence of uh, existence of normative models, however, also in the everyday uh, activities in uh, teachers' lounges, in the classrooms, everywhere, uh, these same models were also replicated and the, all this constructed the norms of the classroom language. Um, that would not suffice. The, um, these practices also had personal relevance for the teachers. Register competence often demarcates social groups. The two teachers often described uh, that they differ from other types of Finnish as second language teachers. They taught in a context where they could not rely on students' existing literacy skills or skills in some uh, language that they usually also know, knew. And, uh, this type of context required specific skills that were mostly learned on the job. The multimodal resources of easy to understand Finnish were described as uh, a core of this skill set of being a Finnish as a second lang language teacher. So, as such, the register uh, functioned also as an emblem of being a basic literacy uh, teacher. The fact that easy to understand Finnish is an institutionally supported register that has both, both uh, uh, instrumental and personal relevance for the teachers has its effects on how other pedagogical practices are perceived in the organization. Although translingual pedagogy, pedagogical practices were used in the organization and although in the classrooms both the teachers and students engaged in translingual meaning making, these practices remained relatively invisible. So, 
So, to conclude, um, although there was interest in integrating students' first languages in the classroom pedagogies, the theorized tools for doing so still need, needed developing. Teaching is a very methodological way of acting. And uh, uh, Elena already mentioned the Finnish educational system and the importance of her participation. Um, if I compare discourses con uh, considering multilingualism within Finnish educational system, there seems to be quite a difference between basic uh, education and basic literacy training. Currently, language awareness is already an integral part of uh, the most recent national core curriculum for basic education. Uh, but in basic literacy education, uh, in the core curriculum that is from 2012, there is uh, practically no mention of the multilingual nature of these uh, student groups. So, integrating students' home languages as ratified semiotic means of classroom interaction is currently being done without obligation of regulatory bodies. So, in, in a way, in the basic literacy tr uh, training classrooms, I'm somehow observing uh, earlier steps of this kind of a project, a process. Mm. Translanguaging is an approach that challenges the previous theories of bilingualism uh, that rely on a monolingual and monoclossic frame of reference, and it strives to enhance participation through empowerment and visibility of minority, minority groups and languages. Uh, and although these kinds of discourses uh, in the uh, schools uh, seemed like these uh, different types of approaches would somehow rule each other out. Uh, teaching Finnish through Finnish and deploying translingual practices in the classrooms, uh, they do both uh, uh, aim at enhancing students' participation and um, as pedagogical practices uh, are rather complementary than mutually ex ex exclusive. But uh, the uh, thing is that uh, although this is the case, the pre predominant pedagogical practices were also framed as educational ideals or organizational policies in these uh, classrooms. In this presentation, I have focused on the dynamics of language socialization in the classrooms, uh, but in order to uh, go further in this type of a change and really bring the uh, students' first languages uh, as a part of the classrooms. This is really a question that concerns the language socialization of Finnish as second language teachers, not students. Okay, this is where I stop. Thank you for your attention.